Good evening. Family, friends and comrades of two young soldiers killed in Afghanistan lined a Wiltshire High Street today as their bodies were brought home. They were joined by hundreds of others paying their respects to Rifleman Samuel John Bassett from Tor Point in Cornwall and Rifleman Philip Allen from Dorchester. Both were just 20 years old. Bob Cruz reports. During his last conversation with his family, Rifleman Samuel John Bassett told them he was having the time of his life. But that life was to be cut tragically short. At just 20 years old, having only completed his training in May, Sam Bassett was killed in an explosion in Afghanistan. Today, in watery autumn sunshine, family and friends came to Wooten Bassett in Wiltshire from his hometown of Torpoint in Cornwall to pay tribute to a capable, bright, fun-loving young man. Torpoint is a very small town, uh, and, uh, you know, when one of our guys from the RAF regiment was injured nine weeks ago, you know, that hit home quite hard. Um, you know, we thought, well, you know, it's never going to happen in Torpoint, it's too small. That was hard to take, and then, you know, less than a couple of months later, you know, we have the ultimate sacrifice paid and the town is still in shock. Uh, and I think it will be for a little while yet. And of course we have the funeral to go yet. Also returning to British soil today, the body of rifleman Philip Allen from Dorchester in Dorset. United in their grief, some of his closest friends came to pay their own personal tribute. Phil Allen had only joined the army in the spring this year, but he'd already impressed those with whom he worked with his ability and enthusiasm. With poppy wreaths still lying by the war memorial here in remembrance of those who fell in conflicts past and present, the people of Wooden Bassett turned out once again in their masses. Nobody asks them to do this week after week. They just do it. They feel it's the town's duty and it will continue to be the focal point for Britain's grief as long as the death toll continues to grow. Bob Cruz in Wooden Bassett for the West Country tonight. A quarry under threat of going bust has been bought by Cornwall Council. Twelve jobs have been secured with the purchase of Castleland Diners Quarry at Ludgavan near Penzance. The site provides high-quality granite for building work and also produces tarmac for roads. Cornwall Council's refusing to say how much it's paid for the business. The actor Edward Woodward, who lived in Cornwall, has died at the age of 79. Seen here on stage at Plymouth's Theatre Royal, Edward Woodward was best known for his roles in television series such as Callan and the Equaliser. He lived near Padstow and leaves a widow and four children. A crumbling building on the beachfront at St Ives is to receive a government grant of £900,000 towards urgent repairs. The Grade 2 listed Porthmure studios have been used by artists and fishermen for 200 years. The total repair bill is put at £4 million. Meanwhile, there's disappointment at Ilfracombe, where a bid for a million pounds to help regenerate the seafront has been turned down. The council wants to transform the town's museum and link it to the landmark theatre. It's now pinning its hopes on cash from the Arts Council and a lottery fund. Icy roads, snow blizzards. Sound familiar? Well, unfortunately, winter weather isn't far away now, and when it arrives, it will cause problems for all motorists. The authorities are preparing for the worst, and car owners are being told they should too. Duncan Slightome reports. Meet the team toiling to keep the tarmac of our highways and byways safe this winter. Between them, the highways agency and councils work together to stop ice from forming and clearing snow when it's falling. They are heroes of the highway, working through the darkest and coldest nights, setting out on roads other motorists would be well advised to avoid. It's vital to our local economy that we keep our travelling public moving and therefore we are well prepared uh, with the gritting force, uh, with the short barns that are full, uh, to, to ensure that those uh, highways are best as, as far as possible kept open. In Devon alone there are more than 8,000 miles of roads. Gritting them costs the county £5 million each year. Well, the authorities say they'll do all that they can to keep the roads clear, whatever the weather. Drivers like you and me are being asked to do our bit and be prepared for winter as well. Now is the time, they say, for us to line our boots. Not the ones on our feet with fluffy socks, but the ones at the back of the car, with a kit for when the weather is at its worst. 
Now, you might think you'll never really need a shovel or soup to sip, but earlier this year, as heavy snow swept across the region, hundreds of motorists got stuck on the A38 at Holden Hill. They had to sit out the worst of the weather in their cars until they were led to a makeshift shelter. You really need to be prepared for the worst, really. Uh, and as I say, if you don't need to make that journey, don't make it in the first place. Thankfully, that message is just for us. There are some drivers who will have to set out into the worst of the weather, showing true grit. Getting behind the wheel and going the extra mile to make sure we can get down the road when we need to. Duncan Saito, near Exeter for the West Country tonight. All right, let's take a look at the current weather with Ruth Wignall.